We have a lot to cover off in today's video, guys. I really want to give you a bit of a health check of my eBay store over the last month. It's been a busy one. There's been a lot going on. I went away on a 10-day thrift trip to the USA to try and find a bunch of cool items to sell on eBay. And I wanted to take you through how I best optimize my store to generate sales while I was away. And then how I've actually gone since I brought all of those items back as well. So a lot of number crunching, but I've got the details here for you and I'm gonna show you it now. There were actually only two checklist items that I needed to worry about before I went away on holiday. And the first one was to activate the eBay time away mode feature. Now I won't go into the process of how to do that in this video today. There are too many videos on YouTube for you to be able to go and check out how to do it. And it is a very simple step, but I activated that over a 14 day period that I wasn't able to ship the items. So that was the first step and it was a very, very crucial one. And then the second one, I thought that it would be within my best interest to have active listings going up, new listings going up every single day that I was gonna be away. So for the two weeks before I left, I actually went away from my normal 10 listings a day and I did 20 listings a day. 10 were scheduled up for the days that I was gonna be away and 10 were activated on that day. So there was a lot of work pre-trip to be going from 10 to 20 listings a day, but I was really glad that I did it because as you're about to see here with these sales figures, we had some pretty good numbers over the 14 days that I was technically inactive on eBay. So my eBay store typically does about $300 in daily sales. And as you can see here with these sales figures, I dropped down while I was away over the 14 day period to $199 in average daily sales. So that worked out to 2,783. We fell by 34% and I sold 71 items. My average sale price is always around about that $40. So that never differed. I think the findings that I can take out of that, as you can see here was the longer the postage delay was, the weaker the sales day was. So I knew that those first few days, and if you have a look at the graph here, the first four days were really, really bad. Then we had a good day randomly, uh, and then it fell back down and it went back up again. But as you drew closer to the end of the 14 day period, the sales went away and picked back up again. And that's obviously due to the postage delay not being there, the fact that it is just a few days away from me being able to be back home and ship out the items. So I kind of anticipated that the, the, the days closer to the end of the trip would be better than what they were at the start. Um, but to see overall on the averages that I was actually only able to fall by 34%, I think that was pretty epic. I thought there would be more like about a 50% drop. And I think it would have been a 50% drop if it hadn't have been for the 10 listings that I had scheduled up so I really cannot recommend that more. To have that there, it just showed a bit more activity uh, in my store and it allowed me to get a few more sales come through. The other finding that I had, or the other, I guess, advantage or benefit that I was putting in place while I was over there um, was that I was accepting the best offers. And I think that really did help the algorithm. Even up to 20% discount on some items, I was accepting just to keep the algorithm moving in my favor. So. That would be another really big step that I would encourage you guys, if you are away, just to keep an active look at your eBay store. And if there are any offers there to send off, make sure you're doing that right away. I've got the numbers here for you on what took place while I was away. I ended up sourcing 130 items. I spent $1,410, but I needed to buy an extra bag and pay for additional luggage to get all of it back. In the end, I think it was about 58 or 59 kilos worth of stock to sell that I was able to bring back home. And that third bag, that extra luggage fee was about $120. So 1,410 plus 120, I basically spent $1,530 Australian uh, to bring back 130 listings for eBay. And I was obviously very cautious of the conversion rate when I was buying. I was also cautious of the weight of the item as well when I was buying, which is stuff that you just simply don't have to do when you're back here in Australia. So. There was certainly some more elements to make sure that I was sourcing correctly. But when you look at the average purchase price, it worked out to about 11 to $12 per item, Australian dollars for those 130 listings that I got. So I really did think that my sourcing was on point. I think I got it right. And I think I bought desirable items as well that people would be wanting. So out of those 130 items, I think I'm holding on to, I think about eight or nine for the personal. I just can't let them go. There's some really nice vintage shirts that I bought in Melrose Ave that look, I truly, they weren't my, I didn't know they were my size. They, they didn't. I know you're thinking, yeah, Matt, sure, you're just buying that for yourself. But no, I really didn't know until I got back that I'm like, hold on, these are extra large. They fit me perfectly and they're exactly the sort of thing that I love. So um, I have held on to about eight or nine of those items. Um, there's 80 items still sitting up on eBay. Guys, I've sold 40 items in the last two weeks, uh, which is pretty epic. And look, a lot of them, I would say about 17 or 18 of those sales out of those 40 have come on eBay and there's been about 22 sales uh, that have come from you guys watching the videos that have messaged me on Instagram before I've even had a chance to put it up onto eBay. 
and uh, and have been able to sell them. 22, I think, sold to you guys. Um, the, the total sales, when you add up both eBay and Instagram together, the total of the 40 sales, uh, $1,824. So it's a third of the amount of items that I bought that I'm selling, uh, 40 out of 120. And when you take out the fees that I've sold with eBay and you take out the postage that I had with you guys and eBay as well, it pretty much brings me back down to break even. It brings me back down to about 1400 bucks, which after just two weeks of being back from this trip to be now at a point of break even, and I've also got 80 items to go on to sell. I think it's just been a fantastic turnaround. Um, so there you go, guys. I'll, I'll take you through five of my very best uh, flips that I've been able to take out of it. I don't want to take you through all 40, um, but I've got five here that I want to take you through. And the first one, uh, the first one that I want to take you through is actually a pair of shoes, a pair of Nike Air Max 90s uh, that I got from Josh. And uh, Josh actually gave these to me for free. He bought them for $30 US. He bought them for $30 US and uh, that works out to 45 bucks uh, Australian. So he just gave them to me. It was, it was pretty bizarre and, and incredibly kind of him to do that. Uh, and I knew that they were gonna go on to sell well because they were pretty much like new. And um, sure enough, they went on to sell and uh, we got a $75 sale price on eBay for these shoes. And um, it only cost about $7.50 to ship off as well. The fees and the post, you take it out of it. Like I said, I didn't buy the item and uh, I made myself about 60 bucks worth of profit. So uh, that was incredible. A huge thank you to Josh. I knew the Air Max 90s were gonna do well and there were just some unbelievable shoes at the flea market. Um, the next one as well was another pair of shoes that I picked up at the flea market with Josh as well. Uh, and it was a pair of Nike uh, Kyrie 2, they were the Battle Greys. Um, I picked these up for $15 and uh, an awesome pair of shoes that actually ended up going to sell on internationally back to the USA, which I thought was pretty funny, but we got a $65 sale price for that one there. And it also went for $25 worth of international shipping. So. Um, 65 bucks, paid 15 for it at a flea market in South Carolina. So uh, that works out to an average uh, purchase price. I think it was about $22.50 Australian. Um, and yeah, we got a pretty good turnaround there of a $65 sale price for the shoes. Uh, the other one as well was a pair of, another pair of shoes too. The third pair of shoes was a pair of Nike Zoom Freak 2s. These were the Giannis Anodacupos. Um, this was a pair of uh, six youth, um, pair of black basketball shoes. I actually picked these up in the Goodwill bins. Um, so all that in the Goodwill bins is based on weight. Um, so it would have only cost me a couple of dollars to get these shoes and they were in pretty good nick. Um, I ended up selling them for 45 bucks. So the, the margin was really quite high there, uh, selling them on eBay for $45. So that was a pretty good turnaround. Um, and then the other one as well that I wanted to show you was the, uh, the Kobe's. I got a good turnaround with the Kobe's. Um, they were the Phenomenon 5s. Uh, I picked them up, they were a size US seven and a half. Again, they were at the flea market with Josh and Haley. Um, and I ended up selling them for 170 bucks, which was just wild. I knew that they would sell really quickly. I actually had them verified and authenticated at the flea market with Josh and Haley with a guy that really knew his shoes. He said, yeah, they're completely legit. And I paid 30 bucks for those shoes as well. So 30, it worked out to about $40 Australian. And I've turned that into $170 on a very same day sale uh, here at eBay Australia. So that was a really cool flip. I knew it would do really well. And actually also too, that one was a, an interesting one because the person that bought it sent it through the authentication process that eBay provides and eBay even gave it the authenticity guarantee before the buyer received the item, which I thought was pretty cool too. So it was, it was almost double checked as uh, authenticated. So uh, that was really cool. And uh, the one other one that I wanted to tell you about, another pair of Jordans. It was the Jordans I picked up on Melrose Avenue and it was a really nice viewer of the channel that ended up buying these uh, these pair of shoes for pretty much what I was really hoping to get for them as well. I thought based on the comps on eBay, based on the fact that this item was so unique and, and probably very, very tricky to find in Australia uh, that I was able to get them for about, I was probably gonna be able to sell them for about $250 and that's what this uh, viewer actually paid. He paid the $250, bought a few other items off me as well, which was very, very kind. And uh, yeah, he got a pair of really cool uh, Jordans. Um, these were the Blues. Um, so the Blue, so Blue is a graffiti artist uh, over in over in LA. And uh, I found these uh, at Buffalo Exchange, which is a vintage clothing and shoe store in Melrose Avenue. I paid hundred and eight dollars for these shoes, which was such a, a heavy purchase, considering I, I, I thought they were genuine, but I wasn't hundred percent sure. I took the shoes to Cool Kicks, who are an awesome YouTube channel. 
they got authenticated for ten dollars at Cool Kicks, and I knew that I could bring them back home and sell them with confidence. And I knew that based on the sales that I was seeing on eBay, they were worth about that two hundred and fifty bucks. And then sure enough, uh, Aiden, a viewer of the channel, has gone ahead and, and made that purchase. So that was that is so far my my best flip. Uh, the Jordans for one hundred and eight into two hundred and fifty dollars, which is just epic. But um, look, there's a bunch of others. There's so many others. There's 40 that I could take you through, but I just thought I'd take you through those five, which ultimately were all shoe sales. Um, I bought 20 shoes and five of them have already gone for some pretty good money, but uh, we've had a lot of clothing items sell as well because based on the weight, I was only able to buy shoes and clothes really. Uh, and we've had some pretty good clothing sales as well. But the ASP, the average sale price is probably best uh, from a flip sense with the shoe category. So I've had to sum it up in one sentence. The whole trip, the whole process was certainly worthwhile. I was able to generate a number of really good sales on eBay while I was away. And then I've been able to bring back and generate some really good sales with what I was able to buy over there. So hopefully guys, uh, that gets you back up to date on where I'm at with my eBay store over the last month. Things are rolling along really well and I'm back out into the thrift trying to find items that I can sell for a profit on eBay and get my 70 listings that I need every single week. If you missed the last video that I put up on this channel, it is me buying my very, very first home and it's a super fun video giving you guys a bit of a tour around the place. I'd love for you guys to go and check it out if you haven't seen it yet. Drop any comments that you have in this video based on what you've heard today as well because I'm happy to answer them. I'm going to answer every single comment. We'll see you in the next video.